Jiggy cat on a damn feeling spree. This is not good, so and you can't mimic my energy. 100 round drum and be hanging like a center. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Nagato's Revenge, and for today, we're going to be talking about on how to play classic Game Boy Advance games on your modded PlayStation 2 via with the use of Temp GBA. That is the homebrew we're going to be messing with today. But with that being all out the way, we're just going to go ahead and get started on the prerequisites. Everything I'll stay will be in a link in the description down below. This includes any useful links, um, anything in terms of written guides, and anything in terms of what I use for today will be in a link in the description down below. So, first things first, of course, you need a soft modded PlayStation 2 that already has free make boot installed you also need a playstation 2 memory card that of course has free make boot on it you also need u launch elf you also need Renoir. You also need any compatible Game Boy Advance game. Most games will work, but there will be a compatibility list via from Temp GBA. I will actually get more into that as well, because certain games um via with the use of this emulator doesn't really work out well. So you may experience um you know slowdowns, graphical issues, and all of that fun stuff, or even in game breaking um mechanics of that nature. Another thing which you'll need, and last but not least, is a USB stick formatted to. 32 since this is how you're um the basically the playstation 2 is going to read the actual games and as well as the actual emulator itself with that being said let's go ahead to a pc and get this set up Alrighty guys, assuming that you did follow all the prerequisites as stated in the intro, we're basically good to go and get started on the PC side of things. So first things first, let's go into Google Chrome. I will have this um, website in the link in the description down below. Either you could go ahead and type in the URL or just, you know, via in the link in the description down below, just click on the link. But this is where I got the um, official Game Boy Advance emulator for the PlayStation 2. Um, you could also read, you know, some of the change logs and some recommended tips, which I do recommend you guys on, you know, reading this whole blog or this forum page right here since you guys will have you know a better understanding on what this emulator can do via for your system however what i am not going to do is just read all of this since i want to make this video pretty quick and i just want to get to the main point so all you need to do basically is go to the download file section right here and just click on it i already have the file via right here on my desktop so i'm not going to re-download it just to save some time but um if you're from ntsc or you have like an ntsc based playstation 2 go ahead and download that one if you already have a power region ps2 make sure to go ahead and use this i already know for um japanese playstation 2 systems since my uh, playstation 2 is a japanese fat model um ntsc does work with this as well but with that being um, stated out the way, what we're going to also talk about is the actual compatibility list. If you guys remember what I was saying in, via in the intro, not all Game Boy Advance games work. So, for example, um, here is basically just a quick key or, nav or excuse me, navigation for set title. So if you see your game that has a green like highlight over it, that means the game is fully playable. Um, if it has like a red marking, that means the game is not working at all. So for example, if you were trying to play Bubble Bobble Old and New, you can see from the patch notes that the um, you know testers or developers were doing for this, um, it states that it doesn't start up. There's black screens and it has like you know some major issues. Or for example, I was trying to play uh, Kingdom Hearts on this just to see if it worked. So for example, here's Kingdom Hearts here. You can see that one has some minor issues. So here's from the patch notes itself. It says um, the full motion video introduction will pixelate and then freeze shortly after starting. Save states and load that save state to continue to get the actual game. So be sure, um, you know, just to follow the compatibility list itself. Since like I stated before, not all PlayStation, or excuse me, not all Game Boy Advance games will work via with the emulator. But assuming that you guys did you know check your games to see if they're compatible or not we could go ahead and just minimize this out and get focused on the rest of this process so as of right now what i want y'all guys to do is plug in your usb stick via into your um pc as well i want you guys to make a folder on your pc you could just call it game boy advanced games this is where you want to go ahead and dump all of your gba games that i'm not going to link any games because you know piracy and roms i don't really want to get into that um all you got to do is just google your favorite game boy advance game and put rom at it at the end google will help you for that but 
assuming you already have Game Boy Advance games on your device or on your PC, I should say, just go ahead and put them into like one or basically put them into all one folder. So it's easier for, you know, you to find your games at and it's just more organized. Of course, I just have four games. I'm not going to, you know, try to put 800 games onto one device or to one USB just to save time. But once you have your games into one folder, as well as you have the dot zip I told you guys to download, I got to do with Fernoir. I will have that in the link in the description down below as well just extract files here you can extract it to your desktop or wherever you have it if i go into this folder this folder right here and the actual gpa folder here's all the content where um basically this is the emulator if you guys ever messed with playstation 2 homebrew you notice that that elves are the executable file for the ps2 but with that being stated out the way we got our games ready we have the emulator here what we're going to do is go to file explorer you want to go to your USB drive, so make sure it's plugged in. And one thing we'll, we want to verify first before even transferring any contents onto our USB drive, please make sure that your USB drive is on FAT32. So the way on how to do that is right click over your drive, going into properties where it says file system, please make sure it says FAT32. If it says NTFS or XFAT, your PlayStation 2 is not going to read um, any contents since the PlayStation 2 can't read any other file systems other than FAT32. So if you have any important documents or files on your um, USB drive, please be sure to back them up um, before this process because anytime you reformat your USB drive or anything, and this just goes with you know anything dealing with computers or consoles or anything of that nature, anytime it says format, it most likely will erase all of your data. Um, but assuming that you guys um, you know still following with this process you backed up your data or you just want to reformat or it's a new uh, usb drive all you got to do is go right click format right here where it says file system everything was uh stating it with an ntfs or xfat all you got to do is switch it to fat32 allocation unit size go to default allocation usb volume label that's just the label you can name it as i just label mine as usb um make sure you have quick format toggled on once you have that, go ahead and hit OK for formatting. It will take a little second on to basically reformat your USB. But once it's fully done, it will get like a little window that will pop up on your screen that says format complete. So you're good to go from here. Now what we're going to do, minimize that out, open up File Explorer again, go to our USB. And now you should see, once again, if we go to properties, our thing is on FAT32. So. What we need to do now is take our Game Boy Advance games, just drag and drop to our USB. So I have my four games here. And what we're gonna do is take our GBA emulator, just drag this whole folder right here. So that is that right here. So let's just open up the USB, verify our emulator stuff is here. So this is the BIOS for it. Here's the .out files. We have our games into one directory. Now all we gotta do is just go to show hidden icons go to safely remove and hard jet or basically eject our USB. So I know my uh, USB H is the contents. We have our stuff. Go ahead and safely eject out your USB. And now what we're going to do is go to our PlayStation 2, plug in our USB, and then we're going to go ahead and get fully started on how to set this up on the PlayStation 2 side of things. Alrighty guys, so as showcased here, you can see that I am on my PlayStation 2. As of right now, as a recording, I will have a picture showcasing right on, on the screen on how your PS2 should look. You should have your memory card in, you should have your controller in, and you should have your USB cable in, or you, excuse me, not your USB cable, but your USB stick. What we wanna do now is go ahead and go into you launch Elf HDD. Yours may just say you launch Elf. That's totally fine. Just go ahead and launch it. And then once you're into uh, you launch elf, what we're going to do is go into um, file explorer, I believe, or the first option. So I'm just waiting for it to do its thing. So yeah, so you want to go to file browser, excuse me, not file explorer, go ahead and hit X or you may have to hit circle. What you want to do is go to math. Um, just a key note, math always means your USB. So that's what it states for here. So go into math. Now you can see that we have our GBA emulator as well as our Game Boy Advance game. So let's go to GBA. I do recommend using the um, temp GBA.elf. That um, version has better compatibility as opposed to read GBA. So make sure you use temp GBA.elf. And then um, once it fully boots in, you'll see a blue menu. So that's what I'm just waiting for it to do here. So here's how it looks. Now, um, it's pretty simple on how to, uh, you know, set this up. Uh, 
for example before we even get to like starting up a games i'm just going to show you by hitting select you kind of get a little menu if you want to mess with certain things so if you want to like do save states you can um if you want to deal with um input and settings if you want to change any of your button configuration and stuff like that you can as well um if you go into display settings uh if you're in the pal region you can switch to pal um and you can also go all the way up to 1080i i know on certain tvs it may not show up i know with mines i had to deal with some fiddling around if you were wanting to you know output your thing to 1080i i just recommend to leave your stuff on to ntsc or power region and just leave everything basic for now until like you know if you get a good footing on how you want to set your configuration for certain games um make sure of course that your boot from is from gba bio so it should already be um default to that but what we're going to do now is go ahead and load new game so we're just going to load a new game. You want to go into mass, go into GBA, or excuse me, Game Boy Advance games or wherever you have it at. And now we just got to launch your game. So we're going to be testing out Super Mario World. And now on the screen, um, it basically will be reading its ROM. Um, it may take a little while as well, depending on the file size of the game. It doesn't take too long, but what it will do as well, if the title um, is on here, it will apply compatibility fixes if it detects it so i guess for this title it already detected it um and then once this uh fully boots up you can see now on the screen that uh super mario world will be broadcasted so here's the game boy you know intro screen and i'm just waiting for it to do its thing so yeah, this is actually the Japanese version. I thought this was the US one. All right, well, you can see that the Game Boy uh, Advance game is running just fine. So here's Super Mario World. Um, I'll just do a quick gameplay just to show that um, everything is okay. I know sometimes with certain titles, the audio may be wonky throughout um, the gameplay. So I just want to state the emulation to this is not going to be subpar like playing a Game Boy Advance game on your you know high tech PC or even like on your Vita, PS3 or Switch or anything of that nature. But you know, it does the job for the most part. So here is me playing, you know, Super Mario World from the Game Boy Advance on my modded PlayStation 2. Yeah, and that's how simple it is to set it up. If you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to like, please be sure to share. But with that being said, my name is Nagatoza Vinch, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Hey everyone, it's me Nagatoza Vinch here. Hope you guys did enjoy today's video. With that being out the way as well, I highly do recommend that y'all guys go ahead and follow my social media so you never miss any of the latest hacking guides and tutorials on my channel by subscribing to me and hitting that notification button as well. It's another method on how you will know when I drop my latest content, whether it be for the Vita, PS4, PS3, and such and so forth. As well, if you want to be in a mix of things and you want to join my official community, you can join via the link right now showcased on the screen and join my discord that way and if you do want to support my channel in any shape or form you could become a patron i will have a card right now but with all of that getting out the way hope you guys really did enjoy this video and i'll see y'all next time peace